welcome to the yarn parlor. My name is Allison. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as a love at one. Today is Tuesday, July 26th. This is episode 24. Welcome to all new and returning viewers. Thanks for joining me today. And you can find show notes in the Ravelry group. This is my podcast about knitting, spinning, and knitwear design. Um, so to start things off, uh, I'm sorry about my not showing my Italy trip. Um, I've been extremely busy with sewing and I've just fallen behind on a lot of things. We, um, my father-in-law was visiting last week, which cut my editing time, which is why I didn't put the Italy trip in there. But, um, and we have another guest staying with us for two weeks this week, but um, it's my husband's friend. So hopefully I will be able to um, get away and do some more uh, with the podcast, with knitting, with stuff. I don't have a lot of stuff this episode, but uh, I'll show you what I do have, I guess. So this week I wanted to, or this episode, I wanted to talk about, um, I have an FO, um, a couple new whips, not a whole lot, but a couple. <laughs> Got little bits started. Um, some spinning, the end of Tour de Fleece. I have a Confessions of a Knitter. I haven't done one of those in a while, um, but I do have something to talk about there. I have um, a quick shop update for bags for my Etsy store, and at the very end, I will show some of my Italy trip videos, photos, little montage of what happened there. So the July spin-along hand-spun cal, yes, that's what it is, a cal, not a spin-along, um, is still going on. It ends the 31st, the end of July here. It's Sunday. Next, or this coming Sunday, is the end of the cal. I will close the thread, uh, the chatter thread, and pick a winner from that. So what you need to do, you can actually still <laughs> join because you don't need to finish something you just need to start knitting with hand spun yarn um yarn that you've spun or that you've um, purchased it just has to be hand spun all the rules are in the thread there um if you would like to join but um the prize is I've been working on a popcorn bag to give away but this one I am adding some sparkly crystals in there. I think hopefully they're showing up as sparkling. And if I have enough, I wanna try and do the popcorn logo with crystals. So you'll get um, a fairly limited edition. I think if I ever make another one of these with all the crystals, it will probably be for me. <laughs> Cause putting on all of these little crystals takes quite a bit of time. But um, I thought that that would be fun for the prize, something a little bit special for you guys. And um, one skein of yarn, and then a little sample of my hand spun, something that I've spun. So that will be the prize for the July cow. Um, and I have one correction from last week's episode which was that the, um, the hat pattern I was using, it's called Hats for All by Carrie Bostick Hogue. I pronounced it Hague. I thought it was an A. I even said H-A-G-E. It is H-O-G-E. So um, that is my correction for, from last week's episode. Um, moving on to my FO. So I finished my... Uh, Romney kerchief from Jared Flood. Here is it showing up the whole thing. Here is the finished product. I just blocked it yesterday. I didn't do such an aggressive block, but I did want to stretch it lengthwise as much as I could. I don't care so much if the height, um, if the center here is really long, I want to be able to wrap it around my neck 
um, nicely. So I stretched it lengthwise here and it turned out awesome. I love it so much. I'm gonna put it on, take off my mic for a second. And put it on for you guys. I really love this, the way that it turned out. Because of the slight striping, you get all of the colors in here. And the I ran out of my hand spun, so I used Alpaca Chunky from Cascade, or Bulky. I think it's Chunky. Um, it's 100% baby alpaca. And I can try and get into frame here. The whole thing looks awesome. I love it. I love this bright pop of blue at the top. It's, and the, um, the tails are long enough that they can wrap to the front and I can shove them underneath the whole, whoops, doing it opposite in the camera. There. So that is my kerchief. I will definitely be knitting this again. Love the pattern. It was very simple. It has, It has these simple garter ridges in it. And it was my first go at a provisional cast on and a sewn bind off. Is that what it's called? I think so. Yeah, sewn bind off. Um, which is kind of a pain to do but it, um, it's very stretchy and it works out fine. So the sewn bind off is actually done with the, your tapestry needle. You cut a length of thread and use a tapestry needle to bind off. Um, it looks nice, it's got stretch, and well worth it, I think. I just, I really love the way that this came out. I'm stoked. It really looks cool, especially with just the yarn itself, it's, it really showcases when it drapes all of this striping that I love. So that one is done and like I said, I will definitely be using that pattern again. In the very near future, maybe even. Um, I'm supposed to have my July swatch challenge for this episode, but I am still plugging away at my last two swatches, so that will be left for next week. Sorry about that. <laughs> Promise things and then I just cannot pull through. Um, they'll be done for next week's episode, I swear. <laughs> Moving on to my whips. So I've got two new whips. Like I said, I didn't have that much time. <laughs> oh, this episode is going to be light on my knitting. Um, so I started another hat with the Cormo that I spun from um, Rolex. I bought from Bumblebee Acres Fiber Farm. It was Cormo, Nylon, and Stellina, if I remember correctly, or like Angelina, whatever the sparkle is called. And um, I started the Heel Flap Skater Hat by Wendy Lindquist. This is a free pattern on Ravelry. And unfortunately, I think I might rip this out. <laughs> like one of the only things that I worked on this week. How annoying is that? Um, I might rip this out to make a, another Romney kerchief. <laughs> so I wanted to do some gifts this year for Christmas for friends and family out of my hand spun since I've been enjoying hand spun so much. And, um, and I think it's a really cool I mean, it creates such a cool product. Um, so I was going to knit this yarn into a hat, but I have enough to probably make two hats, but I don't need a bazillion hats. 
So I was thinking I could take the two skeins that I have and make the Romney kerchief for my friend instead of creating a hat for me and a hat for her. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to do instead. Maybe, because this is a thinner yarn, I believe the Romney kerchief is for a worsted weight, so I might go down in a needle size, but I really enjoy the way that it came out. So, um, yeah, I think that's what I'm actually going to do with this yarn. So, anywho, the um, skater hat is a really cool, simple effect. Um, I chose it because um, it would show off the yarn. It's got this pearl spiraling effect on it that I really liked, but another time, maybe another yarn, or if I have some leftovers, I can make like a scrappy hat from it. It's a nice slouchy skater hat, <laughs> air quotes. Um, the other thing that I was working on, I actually just cast on last night, is the Good Time Mitts from Melissa Woods, the Spicy Homemaker, um, from the Spicy Homemaker podcast. And again, it's another simple pattern, great for hand spun, and these are for my mother-in-law. I just cast them on last night, so I've only gotten as far as the cuff, but they're going to be great. I love it. It's a very easy pattern to follow so far. <laughs> Rip cuff. Um, I don't remember if I said that's also a free pattern on Ravelry and um, just what I was looking for. So I'm gonna make those mitts. I'm following the pattern exactly with like the stitches that I've cast on. So we'll see how it goes. And that is out of my Polworth, organic Polworth, um, what was it? Ice Cabbage was the colorway from Classy Squid Fiber Co. That I turned into a two ply. With these teals and purples, I think they're going to look awesome. I love it. It's coming out great. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all that I've worked on this week. Um, I wanted to show you my July sock challenge. And here it is. It is still caked up. This yarn is called Unknown from People Who Fields. And the reason that I'm showing this is because I haven't worked on them at all. No, that's not the reason I wanted to show you this. I wanted to show you this because I'm thinking for August that I might really focus on um, my all of my sock challenges that I haven't finished. All of my monthly sock challenges that I haven't finished, including July. Um, and so I bring this up because I wanted to know if anybody was interested in doing a sock cal for August. Um, just knit a pair of socks in August, simple cal, um, just because I'm planning to focus on my socks. So I thought I could turn it into just a fun cal. If you uh, are interested in doing something like that, let me know. Um, leave a comment, PM me, go into the group, leave a comment in the episode thread or something. Just get a hold of me, let me know if you think it's a cool idea and you'd like to join in, and I can turn it into a cal. And um, yeah. So that is it for whips. Moving on to spinning and the end of Tour de Fleece for me. Tour de Fleece ended the 24th, which was Sunday. And I worked on a couple things, but I didn't get a lot done. Um, but congratulations to everybody who did participate, and I hope that you got all of your fiber goals met, maybe. Um, as for me, I'm just going to say better luck next year, because this year my vacation and sewing took priority during the Tour de Fleece and I didn't get as much done as I had hoped, but um, yeah, so better luck next year 
for me anyway. <laughs> what I did work on was more of the uh, Spin City Art Bat, the Moroccan tea. So I changed it up a bit here though because I didn't... I liked the single that I showed last week but as I was spinning, I kind of let it ply back on itself just to see what it would look as a two ply and I loved it. So I'm turning my single art yarn-ish into a very chunky two ply and I think it looks so much cooler. I really love the way that the two ply is coming out. So I'm going to continue doing this for, I think I, how big are her? I think her art bats are around three and change ounces. So I've got, I had ordered two. So it's about six ounces, a little over. And um, I'm going to make a lovely chunky cowl for myself out of this two ply. Um, and I think they came out awesome. I really love this. And yeah. So that was what I worked on. And I also plied, do I have it around me? No. Um, in past episodes I've been working with on um, Classy Squid Fiber Co. Oyster Roll Eggs. And I plied the white for the second white section. So that's what I've done for spinning this week. Um, not a whole lot, but moving forward, it's still, still getting some done. Um, and right now I'm working on the next um, black section, the carbon carbonized bamboo, um, spinning those singles. That's what I'm working on. And that's it for spinning. Now for my confessions of a knitter. So in past episodes, if I remember, if I'm remembering correctly, I talked about tuck stitches and slip stitches. And I was talking about this during when I was machine knitting. Um, I try not to look back on past episodes because I think it's a little bit weird watching myself. So after I edit and upload to YouTube, I generally don't look back on episodes. So that's why I'm saying if I remember correctly. Um, but I was talking about how a slip stitch is closest to or what a tuck stitch on a machine would be. Mm -mm. I read recently in my Knit Scene magazine for fall 2016, there was an article in there about slip stitches and tuck stitches for hand knitting because there's a new slip stitch pattern book out. What is it called? The Art of Slip Stitch Knitting. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. And um, so they went over what a slip stitch and a tuck stitch is in hand knitting. So I wanted to talk about it in my Confessions of a Knitter because it was my blunder in past episodes and I just wanted to clarify that I was wrong <laughs> and go over what they are. So the slip stitch is when you slip a stitch from your left needle to your right needle without knitting it and creating a, a strand or a float on your knitting in the front or the back, whichever. And a tuck stitch is when you, um, when you knit your next knit stitch, you knit in a row below the actual stitch that's on the needle. You pick up a stitch from below it on a previous row and you knit into that so that when you take it and move it to your right needle, all of those previous stitches before will unknit and create floats but the floats will then be tucked and like squished up into the stitch that you just knit. Um, a good example of a tuck stitch in hand knitting is the butterfly stitch, also known as the bow knot, bow knots, bow knot stitch. Um, where, so in reference to the slip stitch, the float would just float across, creating a horizontal uh, float. The tuck stitch kind of tucks 
your stitches into that knit stitch. It's like sandwiched into that knit stitch. So the floats then um, kind of squish together. I've been really interested in the slip stitch, slip stitches and tuck stitches recently. So I thought that that was really awesome that I came across that article and was able to be able to learn more of the terminology and um, have that clarification moving forward, I guess. It's always exciting to learn learn new things and experiment with it. And uh, so I was thinking for August that I would kind of dive into slip stitches and tuck stitches a bit more as my reference research topic um, for August. Because I also haven't done one of those in uh, a couple months where I research a topic and add a page to the group uh, linking to where you can find some awesome articles or um, whatnot on whatever topic I choose. So I think that's what I'm going to do um, in this coming month is research slip stitches and tuck stitches and create a page for those. Because sometimes when I'm trying to translate machine knitting or industry sweater knitting into hand knits, it gets a little jumbly. So um, I'm really glad that I came across this article and was able to kind of clarify that, um, learn new terminology. And so, yeah, sharing with you guys on fixing my mistakes in my confessions of a knitter. <laughs> um, now I wanted to talk about my shop update real quick in what I've been sewing f this past week. Um, a lot of it, actually, I wanted to talk first about Neely's Knits. Um, a lot of my sewing, I was working on popcorn bags for Ashley at Neely's Knits. She's doing a, she's put together a collection, um, her concession stand collection, which is a skein of her hand dyed yarn in the Starburst colorway. It includes one of my popcorn bags um, and a couple stitch markers, the Progress Keeper, and um, you get an actual Starburst packet, candy packet, um, in her whole collection, which she's updating. Her shop update is going to be Wednesday to today when this video goes up. Today is Tuesday, but I put the video up on Wednesday. So um, Wednesday the 27th at... 8 p.m. Yeah, 8 p.m. She's putting those uh, into her shop. So check out that. Um, and what I've been doing for my shop update, hopefully also going up on Wednesday. I still need to take pictures. I'm hoping that today or tomorrow is a good photo day for me. Um, so I'll be doing my update uh, today as well. Um, I put together my state fair collection. So I love fairs and fair season is coming up in the states. <laughs> and um, so I thought I would put together some things that remind me of the state fair. So all of these fabrics are from um, Spoonflower. And here is my first one. This is a sock size. So I've gotten about half of the collection actually sewn as well. So I might do t make this two updates for this week and next week, um, just because I wasn't able to get all of the styles done that I wanted to. But this is a sock size bag and it's got this state fair medley on it. Um, zipper bag and on the inside it's got this carnival polka dot fabric with the white background. <laughs> And my new labels came in, so I get to use those. They're woven, you can iron them, it's awesome. I felt so bad being like, please do not iron these labels. So now, get a more professional look. The next is this midway at midnight type of thing with all the lights on the rides, and the bottom fabric is, um, 
if you can see there, it's the tickets for the, for the individual rides, which I thought was really cute. This one also has the um, carnival polka dot lining on it. There's a light interfacing, uh, fleece interfacing, so it kind of adds this soft quilted um, feel to them. The next one is, so this is a game. It's a ski ball horse game. Um, I'm not sure if everybody has heard of this, but you kind of play ski ball and then your horse rides across the board and whoever gets the most points in the ski ball game gets their horse across faster and wins. You get your little stuffed animal. Of course, you see those big giant gorillas and everything, stuffed animals hanging over all of the midway games. And then when you win, they like go behind the scenes and pull out this little rinky dink toy. Yep. And that's what you win when you pay like $5 to play the game. But anyway, this um, really kind of, it was something that I played last year at a fair. So I thought it was a lot of fun to, to choose that fabric. And then the last fabric combination that I have is the um, ribbons and jams fabric. So you get your first and second prize ribbons. Here's your state fair um, ribbon. And the inside of that is this um, blue and red polka dot. And this fabric is actually the lining for the horse. So you've got the ribbons on the inside. And that is what I will be updating hopefully tomorrow in my shop and then um, maybe the second half of this bag collection. Those are the four fabrics though that I've chosen for this collection. I just thought it was a lot of fun since I do love fairs. I've grown up going to them and they have a lot of great memories for me. So I'm hoping that there are others out there that love state fairs, local fairs as well, um, and share the same reminiscent good memories of a, of a fair. So that's all I have for today's episode. Thank you for joining me today. Join me next week where I will go over my July swatches. I promise. I, I pinky swear. I promise. I will have those swatches for you. I will be going over my August yarns for my swatch challenge and my sock challenge. Um, maybe if I hear back from you guys, we'll be doing a sock cowl for August. Let me know about that. And... Um, I will be picking the winner for the July hand spun cowl and letting everybody know in the thread there. So keep your eyes out for that. And what else did I have? Yeah, that's what I'm going to have for next episode. I will definitely have more downtime, hopefully less sewing, and I'll have more knitting to show you guys for next episode. Um, stick around if you want to hear about my Italy trip, and I will see you uh, next week. Bye. So my Italy trip. This was my first time going to Italy and I absolutely loved it. I had the best time. I will be going back there, absolutely. So this trip was to meet um, friends and friends family. So my best friend got married in December and she planned her honeymoon for Italy because she wanted to coincide with visiting family. So she did a three week honeymoon trip there and I joined her on her last week. So she, her first two weeks were spent with family and then also visiting Italy, going to Rome, going to Venice, um, Florence, I think it was those three places and then um, a beach summer home of a family member, I believe. Uh, don't quote me on that though. Um, so I met her her last week, spent it with her family that lives there. Absolutely loved it. I didn't do too much sightseeing, but that's what I mean for next. I will definitely be going back and doing more sightseeing. But it was just to visit her and um, it was a three hour flight. So how could I say no? And uh, from Israel where I live and 
So that was awesome. That was the shortest international flight I've ever taken, which was pretty amazing. Usually it's nine hours back to the States or to South Africa, or recently I went to South Korea, which was, I don't even remember how long, but I believe it was over nine hours. Pretty sure it was like 11. So to take a three hour international flight was pretty awesome. I flew into Naples and her family lives in Cerreto, Sanita, and San Lupo, which is two towns inland that are kind of close to each other. Um, so the first couple days of the trip we spent there visiting family and uh, Cerreto is so cute. It's the quaintest little town that I've ever visited. It was so adorable. The whole town is like four blocks wide and 10 blocks long. You can see it from afar, just nestled in with all of this agriculture. And it was so cute. And they've got like two churches and it's just beautiful. It's so cute. Everything is adorable. So the small town, it like everybody knows your name type of town. They have separate cheese shop and separate butcher shop um, with little grocery stores thrown in there it's they have like open squares where everybody just comes during the daytime and hangs out talking and they're just so cute i love these little quaint italian towns um, where local agriculture will come in well local farmers i should say not agriculture the grapes jump off their vine and come into town. No. Um, the farmers will come in on the weekends, like a Saturday or a Sunday, and they'll have their own, I wouldn't necessarily call it a farmer's market, it's just a market, but they'll sell, um, you'll get cheese and olive oil and meat and whatnot, but they also have, a lot of it is actually clothing. Um, clothing and shoes and you can do your shopping at these markets set up every weekend on one of the streets. Um, but the thing that I love about these little towns so much was that they have like local olive oil, which I was trying to find, but the grocery store we went to was restocking the day I was leaving. So I wasn't able to get it. I had to buy another olive oil, but it's okay. It works just as well. But I thought it would be cute to bring back the local olive oil because it's, the olives are grown there and the olive oil is made in this town area and um, it's bottled in non-labeled bottles. It's just their local olive oil that they make for the town and sell. Oh, my battery's going to die soon, so I'm going to hurry this up. Anyway, um, it was just so cute and local grape farmers, like every, whenever you drive in the mountains there, it's you just see all of the grape vines and they have local wines and everything that they'll sell in the stores. And I just found that awesome. I just love that concept um, of a tight knit local community in town. It was really sweet. I stayed with my friend's um, cousin in her house and I'm, you'll actually see some video and or photos of her house because it was beautiful. It was stunning. She designed it herself and just all of the pieces that went into this home were, it was breathtaking. She has a beautiful view of this valley and the mountains and she's got a pool and hand painted walls. Sorry about that. I thought I'd really be able to beat the clock and get in everything before my battery died, but I couldn't. So um, I was talking about the house I stayed in. It was absolutely phenomenal and you will see photos of it and you'll see how breathtaking it was. Um, I had a lovely relaxing time at her home. Um, cousin Kathy, if you're watching, thank you very much. And um, the one sightseeing that I did do though was I went to the Pompeii ruins. So my friend and her husband had tickets to see the David Gilmore concert in the amphitheater in Pompeii, which was awesome. I could hear it from my hotel room. That was the closest I got. It was um, a great show from what I hear. 
but I went, I tagged along on their trip to Pompeii to see the ruins. So we had a great time there. It was absolutely mind blowing. I have definitely have some footage of that, which you will see. And um, it was just a really cool experience. We walked in there, we didn't have a map, so we were trying to figure out which way to go. And then we left because they had to get ready for the concert and um, we wanted to make sure we could make it out of the maze of ruins because we didn't have a map. And we found at the entrance a map of the total space of the ruins that they have there at this, is it a, would you call it a park? Just at the ruins. And from, we were figuring out how far we walked and where we had walked. Um, and it was less than a quarter of the whole space. And we were walking around for a good three hours. I mean, you could spend days there and not see everything. It was absolutely incredible, definitely going back there. Um, I didn't get to see the amphitheater because of the concert, but I saw enough to be amazed and just absolutely loved it. It was really, really cool. And I can't wait to go back to Italy and enjoy more. Definitely have to. Um, so without further ado, here is some of my Italy trip to share with you guys. And I will see you next week. Bye.